Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm gonna to react to Operation Desert Storm, an F-16 pilot fights for his life over Baghdad. Now, this is gonna be fascinating. I've been really enjoying watching and reacting to the uh, Desert Storm uh, uh, series by the War Room channel. It's uh, just a fascinating series of events. It looks like the coalition forces of the US, the UK, France, and I think there was a, a couple of other nations as well. It looks like the mission is just going, you know, really, really well. Like they're managing to get to where they need to get to with very little resistance and the resistance that is put up, you know, is quickly being dealt with. But I mean, something must clearly go wrong. Maybe a plane gets shot down over, you know, enemy territory. Uh, I, I have no idea what's gonna happen in this video, but it's gonna be fun to learn about it. Let's do it. Seventy-two F-16s take off from Qatar and the UAE and head towards the tankers waiting for them over northern Saudi Arabia. They're going to hit the Al Tuwaitha nuclear power plant and research facility in Baghdad, in what will be the largest single airstrike package of the war so far, and the largest F-16 strike in history. But isn't that really risky though? Because if they hit the reactor, you know, potentially all the nuclear fallout and stuff, you know, that's going to stay in the atmosphere for a long time, all that radiation. Linking up with their escort of F-15 fighters, EF-111 electronic warfare aircraft and anti-radar F-4s, the aircraft struggle to refuel from their tankers in the low visibility of dense cloud and strong wind. The facility is the centerpiece of Saddam Hussein's nuclear research program. In previous years, both Iran and Israel have launched strikes against it, but neither was able to deliver the knockout blow. In fact, they resulted in a massive increase in anti-aircraft defences in the surrounding area, SAMs, AA guns and smoke generators. It's the third day of the air war of Desert Storm, and so far war planners have only launched strikes against targets in Baghdad using stealthy F-117s or unmanned cruise missiles, fearing the ferocious defences around the city. I see. So they've not really risked any actual pilots up until this point. So they're kind of going into the unknown a little bit, despite them obviously planning the mission out, you know, to the very fine details. Today is an experiment to see how potent these defences really are. Right. Heading north to Baghdad after taking on fuel, the formation becomes stretched. The last four F-16s are ordered back to base because they're now so far behind. Iraq's radar network has not yet been taken out, and so military commanders know that the raid is coming. They order that the smokescreen systems at the nuclear facility are triggered. Package Q approaches the city. Two-thirds of the formation bank away to hit the primary target at Al Tuwaitha. The others will continue north towards the downtown area to hit the Republican Guard headquarters, Iraqi Air Force headquarters, and an oil refinery. Arriving at the nuclear facility, the pilots discover a thick blanket of smoke over the target. They Deliberately put there? Because they know that the smoke obviously is going to affect the pilot's visibility. Sounds, sounds plausible. The EF-111s desperately try to radar jam Iraqi SAM sites, but there are just too many. In three minutes, 27 surface-to-air missiles are launched against the raiders, mm. and a wall of anti-aircraft cannon fire erupts around them. Most pilots can't see their aim points through the smoke, oh, and so man. abort their attacks to limit civilian casualties. F-16 pilots who do press on to drop their bombs, throw their aircraft around and drop flares to evade heat-seeker missile shots against them. All aircraft light their afterburners to get away as quickly as possible. No bomb hits are scored. While pilot skill played its part, it is a miracle that no aircraft are lost. The F-16s over downtown Baghdad aren't so lucky. Major Emmett Tullia, callsign Stroke 3, dips below the clouds to spot the oil refinery he is to attack. Suddenly, a cockpit warning alerts him that he's being fired on by a Vietnam-era SA-2 missile. Stroke 3, defending SA-2, he announces over the radio, and pulls into a series of high-G turns to evade. Oh, Noting that his chaff is not oh. appearing to confuse the missile, he pulls a last-second hard break, and the SA-2 flies safely past. I know these pilots, you know, they, they're trained amazingly, you know, to cope with pressure, 
but you can bet his heart was thumping in his chest. You know, he came this close to dying. Detonating at a safe distance. Remaining calm, but now alone, Tullia continues his run on the oil refinery, hearing chatter from other pilots dodging further SAMs. His targeting computer automatically computes the correct release points of his bombs, and his two £2,000 bombs fall away. He turns south to get away from Baghdad. Mate, you gotta get out of there, man. Three new warning tones shriek at Tullia, and he immediately hears a command over the radio. Stroke three, break right, break right. Oh my god. He instinctively obeys just as three SA-3s flash by dangerously close on his left side and Mate. explode. Tullia's wingman, Major Jeff Tice, has just saved his life. <sighs> Other pilots radio frantic requests for his status, and after a few seconds he announces, Stroke three, egressing southeast. Stress is audible in his voice now. Absolutely. He heads southeast for just a few seconds oh when a God. warning sounds for an incoming SA-6. Because you can imagine the uh, the Iraqis are desperate to take, to claim at least one plane, at least one US plane in this, uh, you know, scenario. Like, because obviously the first, when the first uh, lot of planes came in, they all left unscathed, which is which was a miracle. Stroke three, defending six, he screams over his radio. He is now panting with the physical strain of the continuous high-G turns. The SA-6 sticks to him through the turns, and Tullia believes he's about to be hit. He lets out a groan as the missile screams past him, so close that he hears the rocket motor. There's another one, stroke three defending again, he shouts. He's lost so much speed and altitude during the manoeuvres that his only chance is now to dive for escape speed. This takes him within range of the AA guns on the ground. Exhausted after six minutes of physical and mental stress, Tullia finally catches a break. The latest Sam loses lock on his aircraft and drifts away. Lucky man. No more warnings light up, and Major Tullia climbs and heads home. Get the hell out of there. Major Tice, who had saved his life with the last second call to break right earlier, and another F-16, have not been so lucky. No. Tice has taken an SA-3 hit on his way out, no. and Captain Roberts' aircraft crashes on the way home with shrapnel damage. Both eject and become prisoners of war. Another aircraft nearly runs out of fuel from all the defensive manoeuvres. An unescorted KC-135 tanker crew dart north into Iraq to bring it home. When Tullia lands in Doha, his ground crew find absolutely no physical damage to his aircraft. Tullia is shocked to discover that his chaff and flare dispensers had malfunctioned and that he has just evaded six surface-to-air missiles using manoeuvre alone. The raid is a failure. While the oil refinery is put out of action, no significant damage has been dealt to Saddam's nuclear facility. So did they, at this point, did the US and the coalition think that they were manufacturing uh, nuclear weapons at this facility? Wasn't it proven that uh, they weren't? Like, or is this a completely separate, because this isn't the Iraq war, is it? This is something else, isn't it? This is Desert Storm, or are they both they're separate things, aren't they? It's lucky that only two F-16s have been shot down. The experiment has failed, and from now on only F-117s and Tomahawks will go to Baghdad. Fantastic video and the added footage of the pilot actually evading the missiles that just put it took it to another level. I legit got chills watching that because because it, it was from the POV of the pilot. I just the, and you could hear the, the clear desperation and panic and fear and, and exhaustion. All of those emotions you could hear them in the voices that we could hear crazy imagine being in that scenario where you are literally literally fighting for your life like at any moment you could get hit and you're going down 
you know, either, either you get hit and the plane explodes, you know, killing you immediately, or you eject, but then you're taken as a prisoner of war and God knows what would happen to you. Crazy, crazy video. Amazing job from the operations room. Fantastic. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.